The vast majority of the world gets their electricity in the form of alternating current, AC. That's great for vacuum cleaners, but it's not so great for computers. Fortunately, it's very easy, not perfectly energy efficient, but easy, to convert to DC. Every power supply you see into a computing device, such as a computer, a wall charger for USB, any of that, will have a transformer, a full bridge rectifier, and some smoothing capacitors. Now they get more complicated than that, you've got switching power supplies and all this other stuff, but at its core, the main components are that. Now I'm going to be ignoring the transformer, because all it does is bring the voltage down. It's not part of the full bridge rectifier. You have your 120 volt, 220 volt, whatever. The transformer just takes that high voltage AC signal and brings it down to the same AC signal with a lower voltage, such as 24, 12, 9, or whatever, is useful for that particular power supply. So it just reduces the voltage and not much else, so that's that. If I turn my function generator on to a sine wave, 60 hertz, which is what it is in the US, amplitude 10 volt peak to peak, which means plus or minus 5 volts at the peaks. It looks like this. Let me show you more of it. So I have here 2, 4, 5, 2, 4, 5, with separators of 2 volts, as you can see. So about 10 volts peak to peak. So this is what you would get after the transformer brings the voltage down from 120 volts. This is what we're going to rectify. Rectifying means you take the bottom part and you flip it up to be with the top part. Now, of course, computing devices want a nice horizontal line. That's the job of the bypass capacitors that you add on to smooth it out. Smoothing capacitors, I guess they're often called. But that's after the rectifier. You don't have to do that. You really don't have to do that. If all you're doing is powering an LED, then you're done. The LED doesn't care if it goes up and down. The human won't detect that. But transistors and logic and all that doesn't like it flipping. So we smooth it out when we need to. But for rectification, all we have to do is flip it up. So here is the sine wave that we're trying to rectify. The actual rectifier is just a pretty diamond of four diodes. That's it. That is all you need. Four diodes. Just regular diodes. They connect by nodes, of course. This pretty little diamond, I love it. And of course you have your load. The load is whatever you're using the power for. This would be a computer. The whole thing is just your load, because this is the start where you put your power in. If you were going to have smoothing capacitors, you would just stick them here in parallel with the load, and that would help take the bumpiness and make it just a little wiggly horizontal line. And that wiggly horizontal line you might put into a linear voltage regulator, for example. But like I said, that's not necessary. The rectifier is just turning an AC signal that has positive and negative voltage into a DC signal that has only positive voltage. So the diodes are connected to each other in this pretty little diamond, just like this. That's the actual rectifier. What you might consider the rectifier input is the top and the bottom, which one doesn't matter because it's alternating current. It goes one way, it goes the other, but to the outputs, it's going to go the same way. The outputs are the horizontal ones. We go like this, right across there. So the top and bottom are where the AC plug in, the right and left are where the DC plug in. And this end will end up being the negative, and this end will be the positive. And remember, voltage is a difference. What does positive and negative mean here? It means this voltage will never be lower than this voltage measured from the reference. So you might have a reference voltage here, that would be the negative terminal of this source, and then you get positive, negative, positive, negative reference to that zero. So there's a constant voltage and positive and negative is going back and forth from that reference voltage. And then over here, just like the H bridge, this is a new connection. It does not share a ground with this. It does not share that reference voltage. The signal is connected only at these two spots. So by saying this is the negative terminal, the reference voltage, the voltage of this spot relative to this will change. This voltage will change, but it will always be lower or equal to the voltage at this spot relative to here. So you might have five volts here and zero volts here, or you might have zero volts here and negative five volts here. Tricky like that. I'll show you that on the oscilloscope later, but this is the rectifier. I've gone over this circuit before, but very roughly, let's say this is going that way. So we might have five volts here and zero volts here. Let's just say that. At this moment in time, that's what the voltage is. So we've got five volts going through here. This is sort of a Kirchhoff's voltage law 
analysis, a loop. So we come down here. So we can see that this diode is not going to want to let current go through this way. So it's going to have to go through this way. So after that point, we have five volts here. Let's say, let's say we have 4.3 volts here because of the forward voltage drop of the diode. So now again, at this point, the current isn't going to want to go through that way. So it's going to be forced out this spot here. So up here at the load, we end up with 4.3 volts. Now let's go backwards because this load, the effective resistance, there's no resistors here other than like the wires and traces and stuff. The vast majority of the resistance will be here. So these diodes are gonna take whatever they take, their forward voltage drop and all of the rest of it is gonna go to the load. So the current, since this is zero, it's gonna wanna go back in this way. So at about this point, it's still zero. So we come up here and the current is not going to want to flow this way through this diode. That would be backwards. If we have zero here, we're gonna have something higher than zero on this end. So that would be reverse biased. So the current has to come from this diode. So let's say after that diode, we get 0.7. That's the forward voltage drop. So whatever is left, this load takes it all, goes to 0.7. We come back through here. The current is still going through that way. And now we're back at the load where we have about 0.7. So we start with our positive conventional voltage here. It goes through here, doesn't want to go backwards to this diode. So it goes to this one, drops a little bit. Doesn't want to go backwards to this diode. So it shunts over here on one end of the load. Then out of the load goes through here. But we can see we've got five volts here and 0.7 volts. So that's reverse biasing this diode. So it's not gonna go through this diode. Even though it's pointed in the right direction, the higher voltage is on the negative end, lower voltage is on the positive, diode says no. So it goes down here instead, drops a little bit, back down to zero. So now we've got 4.3 here and zero here, same thing. Higher voltage on the negative end, lower on the positive, diode is reverse biased and says no. So it goes back out to the power. If we reverse it, then we get a similar situation. So let's say now, current's going that way. So let's say we have zero volts here and five volts here. So let's trace it out again. So we got the current going this way. So it's still five volts here. Then we get up here. Well, we don't wanna go backwards through there. So we go this way and then we drop roughly 0.7. So now we're back at 4.3 there. Don't wanna go backwards to this diode. So it continues here down through the load, 4.3 and see the top of the load has 4.3 again. Even though this is reversed, 4.3 is still there. So now we go backwards, going back in towards the power supply or the signal for the power supply. So we're at zero there. So now we've got 4.3 over here, zero up here, it's reverse biasing. So I don't wanna do that. It's gonna to have to come out this diode. So that's gonna drop backwards from zero. So it's gotta have the drop to get to zero. So we're at 0.7 here. And then again here, we've got five here and 0.7 here. So it's gonna block this reverse bias diode. It's gonna have to come from here, which is from here at about 0.7. So we got 0.7 here and we have exactly the same thing. So even though this is completely reversed, at the load, it ends up seeing the same thing. And that is the magic of the full bridge rectifier. It's almost like a rail switch. You go this way if you're positive, you go this way if you're negative. And the train goes to the station the same way every time. So I'm going to be using the 1N4004 rectifier diode. It's just a regular diode. Rectifier is not a special type. It just means it has a higher power dissipation tolerance. You can put more voltage and current through it, but it has a slower response to when the diode becomes forward biased, reversed biased, and turns on and off. It has a slower response, but we're working with 50, 60 hertz. Any diode is gonna operate perfectly fine at that speed. It's called a rectifier diode or a power diode because it's usually used in a rectifier where it needs more power. The other type, the one that's faster response but less tolerant of power, is a signal diode because it's processing signals rather than power. Quite straightforward. So I have my oscilloscope here. The wave generator is on. It's doing its 60 hertz, 10 volt peak to peak sine wave. And then I have my power supply here I'll be using later. Right now we don't need it. So the first thing I'm going to do is hook up my diodes. I'm going to call them top left, bottom left, top right, bottom right, 
to match the positions in the diamond. I'm just referring to the diagram I have on my board right now. So the output, I'm going to say output for the cathode and input for the anode, just because that makes more sense to me than remembering which is the cathode and anode. Output is the negative side, input is the positive side of a diode. So the output of the top left diode is connected to where I'm going to plug in one side of the AC. The input of the top right is connected to the same spot. The output of the bottom left is connected to the other half of the AC signal. The input of the bottom right is connected to that same side of the AC signal and, of course, the bottom left diode. So that is the connections to the AC, the input of the rectifier. Now for the output. The input of the top left diode goes to the negative end of the DC that we're creating. The input of the bottom left diode is also connected to the negative of the DC we're creating. The output of the top right diode is connected to the positive of the DC we're creating, and the output of the bottom right is also connected to the positive of the DC we're creating. That's the rectifier. It's done. So I'm going to be using a 10,000 ohm resistor, 10K ohms, as my load. So the positive of the DC we have created will go to one end. The negative of the DC will go to the other. Now I will connect the signal, one end of the signal, doesn't matter which, to one side of the AC, the other end of the signal to the other side of the AC input. And that is our entire circuit. So I've got the sine wave I'm creating here, input into the rectifier, the output of the rectifier going across a resistor. Now we measure. I'm going to pick one side, the negative of the signal, to be the reference voltage. So then both probes of the oscilloscope will connect to that same reference voltage. One probe of the oscilloscope will measure one side of the load. The other probe, so the yellow one, is going to measure the positive of the load. The green one is going to measure the negative. And we're done. Let me turn them on. And Bob's your uncle. Now you might say, that looks like a squiggly sine wave. Let me rescale it a little bit. So now the divisions are 1.2 volts. So we're getting our sine wave. But remember, that's one side. This is the other side. This is the positive end of the DC. This is the negative end of the DC. Let me, in fact, stretch them out a little bit. And you're saying, how is this rectified at all? Remember, this is the voltage on either side of the load. Let's look at this spot. The left side, the positive side of the load is at, here, let me bring it back down so I can do this math in my head easier. If there's zero, it's roughly four some volts. It's the zero point here, two, four and some volts. Remember how it should be about 4.3 if we start with five because it's going through a diode? Well, there we go. It's about right. The other side, here's the zero, it's up a bit. In fact, it's up about 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So the positive end of the load is about at 4.3. The negative end is about at 0.7, exactly what I said it should be. So measured as a difference, it's getting about 3.6 volts across it because you're losing about 1.4. Now, let's look at the other peak. We've got the zero here, two, four, just a smidgen, so about negative 4.3, but that's on the negative side. It's the green wave. That's on the negative side of the load is about negative 4.3. And here, here's zero, so the positive side of the load is at about negative 0.7. Negative 0.7 minus negative 4.3 is about 3.6. So over here, there's about 3.6 volts across the load. Over here, there's about 3.6 volts across the load. This is measuring relative to the signal reference voltage. But across the load, we're getting our nice, always positive voltage difference. Voltages are a difference. And if I make this a little taller, it makes the diode drops a little more obvious. It's kind of cool looking. But even though it looks goofy the way I'm measuring it, you can see it's doing its job. The load is always getting a positive difference. It always goes yellow to green, yellow to green, yellow to green, yellow to green. Positive to negative difference. But why don't I do it a different way that will look more like you'd expect. The problem with this is I'm using the same device to generate the signal as to measure the signal, which means I can't use different grounds or there's short circuits and all kinds of goofiness. I have to measure it this way. But if I use my oscillator and H-bridge, I can use this to measure directly across the load. So let's do that. I will turn the wave generator off. Let me go ahead and disconnect these wires. And we will in fact only be needing the yellow will only be needing one measuring probe. So now we're back to just the rectifier and the load. 
there's no input to the AC. So let me connect my oscillator. So one end of the oscillator, basically the one output of it, I'm going to stick there. The other output, I'll just stick there. So that is our new driver for the H-bridge. So now over here on the H-bridge, I'm going to take that signal and put it in the signal inputs of the H-bridge. So that's going to make the H-bridge go back and forth, back and forth, like it's supposed to. The outputs of the H-bridge are going to be my new signal, my new AC. So I'll plug that into the AC inputs of the rectifier. And again, which one doesn't matter, we just pick whichever's negative in our brains. So now, the input of the rectifier is connected to the output of the H-bridge. The H-bridge is going to be powered by my bench power supply today. So I'll connect the positive to the positive of my power supply, the negative to the negative of my power supply. And then over on the oscillator, we need to share a ground between the H-bridge and the oscillator so that the signal can go across. So here's my negative, and I'll just plug that negative into the negative of the power supply. So now those will share a ground. The rectifier is not sharing a ground, but the oscillator and H-bridge are. That's how they work. So now I'm going to power my oscillator with its USB cable, and I'm going to power with five volts. We'll turn it up to 10 milliamps because we're not using much because we do have a 10K load, so we don't need much. So now you can see the current going up and down and up and down as the oscillation happens. So finally, we need to measure. So I'm going to connect the positive of the oscilloscope probe to the positive end of the load. You can already see something interesting. The negative of the oscilloscope probe to the negative of the load. And what do we have here? So here's zero. You can see now that I'm measuring directly across the load with a reference voltage for the load, the negative end. It's never going below zero. That's the middle zero line. And then the divisions are two volts. So two, four, let's bring it up a bit. Now the division is one volt. One, two, three and a half. That's about 3.6, isn't it? Remember 4.3 minus 0.7 is about 3.6? Well, look at that. It's a nice steady line. And you say, but you have no smoothing capacitors. Well, that's because this is a square wave. Remember the oscillator puts out a square wave and the H bridge puts out a square wave? I don't have any smoothing capacitors. I don't have any filters on the output of the H bridge currently. So I'm rectifying a square wave. Just flip it over. In fact, I can go ahead and change the measurement to measure directly the input signal. Let me shrink it down a bit. This is the square wave that the H bridge is generating. And it goes two, four, five. So it's almost right at five volts, undiminished, except for some losses in my oscillator and H bridge. But this is the input that's being rectified. So the bottom, here's the zero, the bottom is just being flipped up to the top. So if I connect over where I was before, and I'm measuring across the load, we get one, two, three, and just over a half volts rectified. Now, if I zoom in on time, you can see right now the divisions are 100 microseconds. You can see this is the square wave generator. This is the output we've seen before where it's flat and it goes and this is the charging and discharging cycle. And if you do look closely, let me bring this down and scale it up a bit. You can see these lines. You should be able to see the vertical lines where it's going to zero and up and down and up. So a smoothing capacitor would still be good. Even though this is mostly a nice solid line, it dips down to zero every time. But there you go. This is a full bridge rectifier, and all it does is flip the bottom up to the top, and you lose voltage, but you can see you just get a smaller total voltage, which is why if you want your final output to be five volts in a USB line, you'll only bring it down to nine or so. So you lose voltage here, and then you lose voltage smoothing it out, and all this other stuff, but eventually it gets down to five, nice and smooth. And that's all there is to it. Both examples of the circuit, with the function generator in my oscilloscope, and with the oscillator H-bridge combo, were doing the same thing. It was just flipping the bottom to the top and reducing its voltage. But we ended up with the same voltage in both cases. I had a 10 volt peak to peak sine wave, which is plus and minus five volts. I was using five volts in my power supply to feed the H bridge, which meant plus or minus five volts. One was a sine wave, one was a square wave, but it affected the peaks just the same. 
the oscillator, the H-bridge, the full bridge rectifier, these devilishly simple circuits that use just a few components in a symmetrical way to do something fascinating. I love them. In some ways, the very simple basics of electronics are more interesting than studying the more complex, crazy things like a computer. A computer is almost less interesting just because it's not as beautiful. It's amazing, it's wonderful, it's useful, but it's not quite as elegant. I love delving down to the little pieces. So while I dig myself out of this pile of pieces, I'll be seeing you.